It's a new month on eBay, guys, and I'm excited about it because last month was great, and I think this month's going to be even better, so let's talk about what it's going to look like. Welcome to the Prop Sales YouTube channel. I am Prop Sales, and I am glad you're here. This channel is about reselling, being a business for yourself, being an entrepreneur, and generating basically a place where people can be positive and have a nice positive community where they can connect with others. And we love to have um, these live shows just like this. If you ever want to join one, we're usually on at 2 o'clock, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's Eastern Standard Time. And you can jump into the live chat, ask questions, comment, connect with other people. Or, of course, you can leave a question or comment after this show post as well. And we're just glad that you're here. And it's a, it's a Monday. It's a bright, sunny day here. We're coming to you live from Charlotte, North Carolina, which is where... Um, I live and my counterpart, Karen, who is not here currently, as you can see, but um, it's just a great, it's just a great day here in the Queen City. I don't know why. I don't really know. I guess there was a Queen Charlotte. I don't even know the history, but we're letting the room fill up. Already 42 people on. <clears throat> I'm glad to see so many guys here. Skip's here. Joe, Red Neckerson, Beth, George, Patty in the house, Connie, Julie, Aaron, Jimmy, D Deb, Cindy. Man, I just ran through those and lots of others that aren't even commenting yet. But um, I'm glad you're here. Let me uh, adjust this angle just a little bit. I realize it's cutting off my head. I'm trying to keep that bright light out of the shot. So um, it's a new month, guys. And, you know, I don't know. Um, new month is kind of always an interesting time for me because it's a time to reflect. And it's also a time to look forward. So I'm kind of curious to hear what you guys think of, you know, the past month. Technically, if you're one of those people who thinks of the quarters of the year, you know, as the first three months of the first quarter and so on, then we just ended the first quarter. So I'd like, I'd love to hear what your thoughts were on the first quarter and then what you think the second quarter is going to be like. Let me grab a little water here. A little warehouse dust. Um, but the first quarter for us was kind of interesting. And um, the January and February were not super strong months in terms of sales and just business in general. And there was reasons for that. Most of the reasons really had to do with, with us, what we were doing, what we weren't doing. And then around kind of the end of February, the middle of February, and then into March, um, we um, really turned it around quite a bit. We made some changes to our business, our plan, our model. And um, I've shared some of those before. I'll talk about them briefly here in a moment. But um, we made some changes, guys, that really impacted the bottom line. Um, I was just figuring out just a little while ago, like, all right, so... For those of you who don't know, your average selling price, we talk about a lot on this channel, it's just if you took the amount of sales you did and divided by the number of items you sold, you get your average selling price, right? And average selling price doesn't tell everything. It's not the entire story of how well your business is doing, but I think it's a really good indicator of kind of where your business might go. If your average selling price is increasing and your costs are not increasing, um, at the same rate, then you're making more profit. On the other hand, if it's going down, unless your costs are going down too, then you're probably losing profit. So it's a good, it's a good guide for kind of where your business might be going and where, and where it's been. So I just figured out, um, you know me, I have to be very specific with my numbers, but I just figured out that was our average selling price in um, March, which is $55 and one cent, two cents if you round up, if you're playing along at home. Um, that is like uh, two, over twice what our average selling price had been last year. Now, the reasons for that are many. One is we started moving away from pre-owned clothing. We started moving away from selling so many um, pre-owned pre jeans, I am specifically, because jeans have Jeans have a lower selling price. I mean, especially pre-owned on average. Yes, you're going to find the one-offs that will sell for higher amounts, you know, 30, 40, 50 bucks. But on average, jeans are more of a commodity type item. So you're just not going to have high average selling price. So that means unless you can get them really cheaply, your actual gross margin dollars and your um, 
the amount of profit you're making are going to be lower. So that's something to think about. If you don't know what your average selling price is, guys, you need to um, figure that out. And I would do it. I would probably do it like on a monthly basis. Maybe you go back and kind of look at it. If you have a spreadsheet like the one that we offer, or maybe you've just created your own like on Google Sheets or Excel or what have you, you can easily figure that out and you can kind of see the progression of it. If you're selling the same items over and over every month, the same type of items, your average selling price is not going to change that much. So that means if you want to make more profit, for instance, you've got to figure out a way to cut your cost or to get more volume of say more volume of sales if you want to make more actual dollars. But um, that's something you should know if you're in this reselling game. It's something you should know if you're a business person, period, like what your average selling price is. And then you're also going to need to know what your average cost was um, and, of course, your expenses and so on. If you put all those numbers together, you can figure out what your profit was. And if, you know, if you're gaining or losing profit or staying about the same in a given month or quarter or what have you. But I was really happy to see that number. We did have a huge sale last month for $2,500, which did blow that number up quite a bit. But even without that, our average selling price, um, I haven't figured the number, but it still probably would have been in the 40s. So it still would have been really, really high. Um, a lot of you know that, um, and I'll shout out some people here in a minute. A lot of you guys know that we started a consignment business and the consignment business by definition has to have higher average selling prices to make it worth it. So we kind of set a floor on that. We don't really like to consign anything that's less than $50 average selling price unless there's multiples of it. So then we can list, you know, one item, quantity, 10 or whatever. But um, it was really good last month. Uh, so I'm going to shout out a few people uh, here in the uh, chat who were just talking about, um, you know, kind of what they were kind of what they were doing and so on last uh, last month. Um, uh, Karin says, I'm sitting at her desk. Actually, I'm not. I'm not at the desk. I'm actually right in the middle of the floor, but nice try. Uh, uh, quarter one is done. Hadn't thought of that, Diane. said, so, Yeah, um, it's a good time to kind of reflect on these 90 days. I mean, you want to break your gear up into segments to sort of take a look at it and get a feel for how your business is doing. You know, the, the numbers don't lie, guys. I mean, I know we we make excuses sometimes about why we had worse results than we did, but they are your numbers. So you can look at them and then make decisions going forward, but you have to know them to, to um, actually learn anything from them. Uh, let's see. The first quarter was great for us, about 435% from last year. Well, that's a huge increase, Mohammed. Congrats. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sam says, last month was fairly poor, but we hit our quarterly goal starting yesterday. I'm hitting it hard. Time to up it. Oh, I love that. So Sam's like, all right, well, we hit the goal, but wasn't maybe quite as good as we thought it was going to be. And so we're just going to go after it. That's great. Beth is up 14.7% from last month. That's great growth. Like if you could do that every month, you'd be very happy. Um, uh, the, let's see. Uh, Flipper Joe says eBay was good last month, but Poshmark jumped up by 32%. Yeah, I've been hearing people have been having great results on Poshmark. Um, I am not even remotely uh, uh I'm not even remotely capable of informing you about uh, Poshmark because we don't sell on it. So I wish I was. I, I guess we need to get off there, whatever, and, and at least try it at some point here this year if we can make it work. But we've just been so super focused on what we've been doing. Um, one of the things that I've been trying to do on a regular basis is hit different types of sourcing that I know I can get a higher average sale price item at. Uh, like, for instance, we hit, uh, little show and tell. Karin loves show and tell. So the other day I hit um, uh, Nordstrom Rack. Some of you who follow me on Instagram, which you can find a link to in the show, in the description. Um, we, I hit Nordstrom Rack. And Nordstrom Rack, for those of you guys who don't know, is supposed to be like the outlet division of Nordstrom which Nordstrom is a, a bit higher in um, department store. And sometimes they have great prices, sometimes they don't. But when you can find things on sale there, especially when you can find off, you know, percentage off clearance prices, 
So I found, um, I went through the shoes. I've been really hitting new shoes a lot. I love selling new shoes because they, they sell for great money and they tend to sell pretty quickly if you pick the right ones. But I found these nice, um, this is a brand I didn't really know. This is Sam Hubbard. So this is a little chuck a boot, basically. You can see they are, they are new, no wear on the bottom. And um, I found these for, let me see if I can show you the tag. I don't know if I can, yeah, 30. You can probably just see it there, $33, but they were actually 25% off of that because Nordstrom was having a sale. So they're about like 26 bucks with tax. And um, they should sell, these. this particular style should sell somewhere around 80 to $85. So a nice, nice profit on those. And I'll be honest with you guys, it took me probably, I was in there probably 30 minutes. It was a good while, but I'm kind of a novice at finding new shoes to sell, really. I'm not as good as um, uh, other people have been doing it for a while. So it's definitely going to be a learning curve over the next six months and so on. But I'm eager to do it because I love going in there and not having to worry about wear and condition and broken things. I mean, I still check everything, but it's rare that you find something that's just really trashed out. Um, and then today I was coming to the warehouse and um, I decided to hit some of the stores that were nearby that I don't always hit. I hit uh, TJ Maxx, did not really find anything great in TJ Maxx. And then I hit a Burlington. I've never had much good, look at, good luck at Burlington before. But I did find two pair of these. Um, these are actually Steve Madden. Steve Madden's not a super great brand, but these are the San Sania boots. Um, they're really cool looking, you can see. And they were marked down as well to, um, let's see if I can show you the price here. You see they're to $12.99. So 13 bucks for those. They should sell anywhere from, I saw some like around 35, and I, I saw some at um, as high as like, uh, I think they were like 75. So I'm not really sure where I'm gonna put these. And they're a good size. So anytime you see something like that, guys, it sticks out, like at least check it out. Um, and Steve Madden, as several people said on my Instagram, are like, oh, I didn't really, I don't really source Steve Madden that often. And I don't either because it's not super great. But there are one-offs here and there that people really like and need to be able to find. So. Um, just going that route, and you know, I'm pushing that average selling price up from in the 20s, like it was last year, to now it's going to be. I mean, I expect my average selling price this year is probably going to be somewhere north of $40. Um, that's a huge, almost 100% jump for eBay. Now, um, some of that will be more profitable than others. The consignment sales, obviously, we're getting a percentage, so we're not spending any money to generate that profit, but we're putting in time. But um, that, I mean, pushing that average selling price up, guys, I mean, that is a huge goal. It, we just want growth in it this year. I don't really have a specific number in mind. I'm just kind of making a guess at what it's gonna be for the year, but we'll see if that pans out or not. If it's higher than $40, I'd be ecstatic. So anyway. Um, so a couple things, just a couple and a little show and tell there just to kind of show you guys like what, what it looks like in uh, practice and so on. And um, just a reminder to go out and hit all those stores that maybe you hadn't hit, you've hit before, but it, now maybe you're thinking about, you know, changing a metric in your business. You want to sell, maybe you want to sell new items and push up your ASP. Go hit some stores that you normally wouldn't do. Um, I'm actually starting to think about, I thought about this today. I thought about, you know, there's there's places I go on a regular basis as the warehouse here, but also other places. And I thought, you know, there's little clumps of stores and sourcing that I could do that I could hit pretty much every time I go to those places, you know, not every time, but nearly every time and kind of like on a regular basis. And I don't have to go way far out of my way to do it. And I can just pick up these one and two and three and four items at a time that are just going to keep, you know, pushing up those profits and I'm not devoting a whole lot of extra time to it. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about for a strategy. Let's look at some of the comments here. Um, the Steam store was up 94% over last month, but that's due to an accidental 6,000 auto accepted offer on a $50 item. <laughs> that sounds like a story. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we were up to, yeah. 
we were up 226% on the month, which was great. Um, so a great, you know, and a lot, and we had some at that big sale, but still it was, we would have been up without it. Um, Sam bought a bankrupt shoe boutique out. Average cost was just under $15 a pair. That's terrific. And we are stoked on shoes. Yeah. I'm sure you got some monster deals there, Sam, if your average cost was under 15 bucks for new shoes. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Flipper Joe likes hitting the TJ Maxx, Burlington Ross, DDs, Nike Outlet, Coles for shoes. I need to I need to check out Coles. That's somewhere I've not gone too much lately. That's a great tip. Thanks for that. Aaron asks, are your consigners concerned about educating you about their retail hotspots? Well, but they're really not, Aaron. I mean, they are they're just you know sending me items. I I don't know where they're getting it honestly, and I don't really care. But um, so I guess I guess no would be the answer. But it's not. It's probably not the best answer. Uh, it's on backwards. Has had great luck with Steve Madden. Uh, let's see. Um, Deb's in the room. Hey, Deb, how are you doing? Hopefully, uh, sorry we couldn't make the live stream. I've been in, in, I think that's supposed to be bed with a something for almost all week. Uh, make sure you use Kohl's Cash. You can buy them on eBay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a great point Stephanie Swanson brings up that, you know, and I, full disclosure, I need to get a little bit better at that too. I need to um, be able to get all the discount cards and programs at these places. I'm not the best about doing that. I forget all the time. But anywhere you go like that, you can earn points and discounts and coupons. You know, even set up, it, here's a little tip, set up a specific email address if you want just for that stuff. So it's not coming to maybe your personal email or even your normal business email address. You don't have to worry about it getting spammed. Even if it does, it's not the end of the world. So that way you can um, ha get all those offers and make sure you're checking on a regular basis and just be able to take advantage of them or see when they're having new sales. I am not the best about that, but I you know do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> but that's a great, it's a great point because there's lots of those programs out there. These stores want you to come in and, and buy. I, I did have one other item in my cart at uh, at Ross, um, or not Ross, it was Burlington today. They would not allow me to buy it. I, there was these pair of Nike cleats, and um, I don't even remember which ones they are. I've probably got it here on my phone, but they were marked down to five bucks, and then there was a pair beside them that was marked down to twelve dollars. Same, same shoe, same size, and so I took them up and asked them, is, hey, is this not four dollars? Is this really four dollars? Like, you know, and the lady at the cashier was like, well, there's no way that's for, that can't be, they're Nikes. And I'm going, well, it's your tag and <laughs> you had it on there. So she said, well, somebody must've put it in there. So she, she scraped out the tag and there was no tag underneath it, which I thought was interesting. So originally, you know, um, Burlington, was it Burlington? Yeah, it was Burlington. They, they have like a, a, a sales tag, you know, their own clearance tag. And then this one had a tag, you know, that said, and it was not for those shoes, but there was no tag for the shoes, period. And the other one had the $12 tag. So, but they did not sell them to me for four bucks, which was disappointing because I probably could have sold them for like 40 or 50. These were a really large size too. They were like a 16. And I think those could have sold for maybe 50 bucks. Um, but anyway, it, it just, it didn't pan out. So I wasn't going to argue with them, you know, they, they put both of them back behind the counter for some reason. I don't know why they put the one. It was correctly priced. But um, yeah, so make sure you get all those discount coupons. Get on all those lists for all the stores that you hit all the time. And um, you'll definitely get, you'll stay you know, up on all the offers they send you. Let's see what else is here in the chat. Lots of great chatters. Thanks thanks for everyone chatting. There's like 80 people in the chat already. Um, so um, that's really cool to see. Um, thanks to you guys for joining and, um, hopefully if you, you'll hit the like button, if you're enjoying the content, but also check out the description down below and make sure that, um, you, uh, find, check all those things out. Uh, Karin is sending me a, a message here. What is she saying? Karin, what are you saying to me? I can't even, um, Keen, Merrill, Salomon, and L.L. Bean is good resale brands for us. Yep. Yep. Great. Great success with Keen and Merrill shoes and Salomon for sure. Um, 
Steve Madden, I have to get new. Otherwise, they set forever, even at cheap price. Yeah, Euro. That that's that's true. You definitely have to find the right Steve Maddens. Um, for some of them are better than others. Um, hang on one second. I'm gonna grab one quick thing while I'm here. Excuse me, one second. Yeah, I'm still waiting on my mystery guests, and they're they're not here yet, and I don't know why. Um, maybe they're having technical difficulty. That's possible. Oh, I think I see them. Hang on, hang on. Let me. Uh, Are you in there? I can't. Let me plug in my earbuds here so I can hear you and not pick up an echo in the um, the mic because I'm not going to be able to hear you. Karen, are you there? Can you hear me now? I can. Who look, who do you look, look who I found? Look, look, look. It's Yvonne. Yvonne, what's going on? I got your girl. <laughs> <laughs> She's not giving me back. I'm never ever ever coming home. Well, then I'm coming there then. So <laughs> The shoes. Oh my gosh, the shoes. Wait, where are you? Where are you? Oh, I'm obviously not with you in the warehouse in Charlotte, North Carolina. I am in Woodland Park, Colorado. And look who, look. Hi, you guys. It's Yvonne, <laughs> or better known as Flippin' Flippin Easy. Easy. That's right. Uh, link Yvonne, down below. <laughs> well, I will put a link down below, but I didn't put it in the description to start because that would have given away who it was. So. Aww. So yeah, so I just happened to be out here and it's been kind of a secret because I was going to fly out here to see a friend who is the sister of, oh, long story, my old work husband, Bestie, and I've never met her before. And so Yvonne has known about this for months and had to keep it a secret. So when I, when she pulled in this morning, I just, I, I told Gary, I said, I'm just going to have to run across the parking lot to hug her. And it was just all down. It was just his, like, besties. It's just going to be awesome. That's so cool. So how, I mean, you guys got together um, for the first time today, right? So what's, what's today been like? Oh, it's been awesome. Yeah. Her, this Goodwill, we only went to one Goodwill. What have we been in there for like four hours? Let's see, what time did I get here? Nine o'clock? Yeah, right when they opened. You've been in one Goodwill for four hours? <laughs> well, I don't know. Three. I don't know. What time is what it? What time is it? So it's two o'clock, two, one, twelve. Three hours. So, oh my gosh, it really, I was making a joke, but yeah, we've been there for three hours. We covered everything but hard goods. Yeah. So there's, so there's nothing so left really in the store. Really cool things. I took a, I took a lot of like silly pictures. I'll share them later. But your bag was bigger than, I mean, it was like it was huge. I did one fifty. I spent one fifty. It's so, a huge bag I could barely carry out. It was good. And Karen helped me go through it and look up comps on a few things I wasn't sure of. And you know, in all fairness, we chatted first up to plan our day. I mean, we chatted. We didn't just be like, "Oh, hi," and start shopping. <laughs> We're not that hardcore. <laughs> We, act, we chatted a little. <laughs> we chatted a lot. Also. We actually chatted throughout, but I was a good looker upper. Good looker upper. I earned my keep. And her bag is in the trunk, so we can't show oh and tell gosh. her stuff. But the, oh my gosh, the boots out here, uh -huh. like the cowboy boots and the Western brands. Western brands. Yvonne does a lot of, um, of the cowboy brands. And you, you said that for the um, reenactments. Yeah, I do a lot of the ranch wear and old West and the vintage or the repops. I, I tend to find a lot of it here and I'm grateful. Well, Colorado. So yeah. Oh, I, I, I think I have Karen talked into Vegas y'all. I think so. <laughs> I'm still working on it. So <laughs> Somebody work on Jason and I'll work on her and we'll get them there. Okay. Yeah. So apparently all the girls are getting together in Vegas. So we might have to go, at least I'll have to go. We have to have Karen there at least one <laughs> night. It's not gonna, you're not going to have a hard time talking me into Vegas good Just yeah saying. well you can yeah you can come too so listen <laughs> i'll i'll show Great. you my and show you and tell you my stuff real quick if you want to see it so um this is ben's fault uh, and i think i yeah so 10 bucks right you're the yeah. good one with glasses so uh these are chacos right oh yeah nice yep. to me on the tacos. and i got them and they're ben's size so worst case if he doesn't like them i can sell them Nice. How, what are the prices like out there? We, I don't know. Oh yeah. Good point. So, um, oh, thank you. So, um, 
their jeans are all over the place. Like they really, really, really like their luckies. I took some tag shots, but what's cool is they have the color days and a hidden color day, right? Yes. So um, color? what does that mean? Yeah. So, uh, well, they post like red and green. So green was half off. Red was 30% off. Right? right. And then yellow. Shh, super secret. It's half off too. Down yeah. Low. On the down low, you could have the half <laughs> off the yellow tags. Um, but it's their jeans. I took some pictures. They're luckies. They're in love with their luckies. So they're like anything. Lucky brand had a $40 price tag on it, but even at half off, that's too much. Right. Right. And, Notice they were still there all the way through to make it to half price. Yeah. That's e Goodwill needs to learn that's not going to fly no. with customers. Not even yeah. with us resellers. It's not going to fly. No, it was way too high. But they had some cool, like I saw some other brands out here that we don't get. Oh, and speaking of, do you remember Desigual? That brand that we yep. always argue about how to say it, but that brand I'm in love with. So yep. Yvonne found a dress and we talked about it. And I'm like, they make like wicked cool jeans. The shoes are to die for. For, but she found this little dress and it was gorgeous so that's for those paying attention at home playing at home d-e-s-i-g-u-a-l very very uh kitschy wonderful like i just love like the love designer it. is from spain i don't think mm -hmm. it's made there anymore but that's why you get that bright madrid kind of influence of his yep. colors a lot of nice. patchworky bright colors okay show and tell number two <laughs> um these are and ordinarily, this brand wouldn't resell for a lot. It's Duluth Trading Company. Um, but these are bison leather um, drivers, right? And nice. they were half off. So that made them, what's that saying? So five bucks, uh, five fifty. So, and they're selling for like a lot. I looked them up. Just trust me. I'm a reseller. Trust me. Um, <laughs> so that went well. And then I bought one other thing. So I think I only spent like 20 bucks. And then I got a present for Gary, and he won't be watching, so I can show you. But look, can you read it? Either you like it bacon. Says, or you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. here, I didn't even look at it. Oh, my yeah. gosh, that is so cute. Yep, so that's my present for Gary because the trip, on a personal note, um, the trip has been awesome. Um, I got to spend Easter with um, one of my dearest friend's families. Um, and I'm literally like, Yvonne, we were – she just stole me for the day. So we're going to go actually do reseller stuff, lunch stuff, and even like some cool outdoor yeah. stuff. I'm going to take her to Garden of the Gods. And so we'll probably come back on Instagram and show you all some Garden of the Gods if nice. you haven't been. I'm going to take her to eat, make her pick out a souvenir. And then I don't know what. Nordstrom Rack <gasps> is having a store Dude. right next to the Whole Foods where, we're, where your pickup point is. Nordstrom Foods. Rack. Uh, did you say, did someone say Whole Foods? Yes, that's been the rendezvous point for everything, right? Um, but tomorrow, uh, we're going to Pikes Peak. So before we get on the plane, we're going to do like a three-hour and drive all the way up. The weather's been beautiful, and the snow has melted. Um, and low. Yes. Not up there. Right. But yeah, it's going to be So, hey, we can see. Can you – I wonder if I can show you. Do you think oh, we can show them from here? Here, we'll open up this. Oh, we're going to open up the sunroof. Oh, sunroof. Oh. So I have to, I have to go blah, 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 blah. So the phone, so it'll show you, but look at the view, like it's be windy, Woodland Park. It's okay. It's going to get loud and gross for a minute, but look what we can see and just keep talking. No, don't talk. Cause then you won't see it, but look, can you guys see that? Oh, you can yes. see it. He said, we saw oh, it. <laughs> so sorry. You're here, like, can we see it? Can you see it? I'm like, yes, we can see it. It's right there. Oh, isn't that beautiful, you guys? Oh, and that's our view every day. And the clap that like the sky is like, I don't know, it's a Colorado blue. It's absolutely gorgeous. Kristen Kristen says that wind sounds chilly. Yeah, it's um it's uh, actually what is it, 60? It's 60 up here and it's 70 today down in the springs, I think. So we're having absolutely gorgeous weather. Um, but yeah, it's been like below 30 in the mornings. And then um, like uh, it's been up to 50s during the day. We're having, um, we're having group <laughs> issues. We're having technical difficulties. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> the 
roof does not want to shut. It's rebelling. It's on maybe, strike. Maybe the Goodwill has a roof you can buy. <laughs> maybe they do. So we're going to, um, yeah, we're going to drive now. No, I'm just trying to Oh, no, we're not going to drive. Uh, so, yeah, I can't see the chat. How's it going with you, Prof? <laughs> well, it's going good. It's a beautiful day here, too. It's like 80 degrees, so oh, can't really very complain. Cool. Yeah, I I can't I can't see the chat. So if anybody says good, bad, or otherwise, um, thank you, love you, um, miss you, all that good stuff. Hope Deb feels better. Um, we'll have to hook up on those jeans and the reveal on the signature jeans at some point. Um, but she's not yeah. been feeling well, so we definitely hope yeah. she feels better. So so Yvonne, would you say that the sourcing and so on in your area is really good in that part of Colorado? Yeah, yeah. you know, okay, she's up here in Wilden Park up the mountain about half an hour from the springs so they just have one goodwill but it's a brand new one shiny clean super clean mm -hmm. now we're gonna i live down in the springs it has about seven hundred thousand people it's the second largest city and um you've been to manitou right jason i think that was you that said yeah. you've been to manitou or well, maybe it was cripple yep. creek but anyways yep. so we're in my town we have about five goodwills seven arcs and then a whole bunch of independents mm. And then, like, I go to Dallas. I mean, Denver. I but I barely have time to shop. Dallas, Denver. Yeah. <laughs> I barely have time to cover my own home territory, let alone run up to Denver. Really? So I feel fortunate. You know, I do feel fortunate. So. Yeah. But, I yeah, mean, you're not. Will, I had to. Oh, say, go ahead. I was just say, though, you're not in a super huge area, but still you're finding. I mean, it sounds like you got a ton of locations there. Oh yeah, so the shoes, I'm I'm telling you, the shoes up here were immaculate. This little Goodwill, I took a, tons of pictures. The employees, uh, and this is something that resellers um, either applaud uh, or uh, whatsoever the opposite of applaud is, but the employees here are wicked cool about the fact that we are resellers. This one gal got a kick out of the fact that we were online and bloggers or vloggers. Um, and it wasn't, uh, there was no stigma attached to it. They were like, way cool, shop on girls, you know, even yeah. took some pictures of us for us. That was kind of cool. Yeah, because so they love resellers, at least in my area, because we're the ones that fill up the carts. And I think the managers get a bonus based on their overall sales for the oh. month. So they're like, y'all get in here, fill up your carts. We do not care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah so and you know, people... I know some people think that a lot of these thrift stores don't like resellers. And I'm sure there are people in some, you know, some of the managers don't. But if you think about it, the real reason why in like a Target or somewhere like that, that they don't like resellers is because we tend to go in and buy all of something that's profitable. And that means the next 30 people don't have it, can't get it, and they're unhappy. But when you walk into a thrift store, what are you really going in there expecting to find every single time? Like, it's not like they advertise, oh, we've got this brand of jeans and this size and fit for you. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's a potluck every time you walk into a thrift store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this one is, is, you said pot. I'm in Colorado. That's kind of funny. <laughs> hey, I wasn't going to tell you I'm taking you to Maggie's farm. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at, look at our dad. He's shaking his head at us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kristen says the people at the first Durham rescue we went to at the meetup were asking about us. So. Oh, well, Hey, I'm almost done. Uh, my apologies, Kristen. I'm almost done with that video. If you have anything snippets you want to send me, um, whip them over to me. Cause I'm almost done editing that video. I haven't been good this time being timely, um, but it's all together. And they're actually in that video. So be sure in the next time you're in there, show them the link. Cause I bet they'd get a kick out of that. They were yeah, so she, cool. She said she goes into that store now and they say, where are your friends? <laughs> Aww. Well, we'll come back. Cause we had a great time. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I mean, they just want to sell their stuff. Cause a lot of that stuff's just going to sit there and get bundled up and shipped off to who knows where, if it doesn't sell. So they want to move it, you know, I mean, ultimately, but I know we, we always think we have to be like really super secret when we're in our store. I don't know. Oh my gosh, those I, I'm an old lady. I talk to myself. So that just ain't happening. <laughs> All right. I should have I should have filmed that, but they were playing the disco in this one. So I was singing and dancing. It was really they get a five star gold star for the music in this one. Nice. The cleanliness, 
the music station. Oh, and get this. They give you free coffee and free cookies. Really? Like just you walk really? in and they get they give it to you or you have to make a purchase? Well, no, you don't. You just go to the back to the coffee, coffee bar. bar and make wow. your own. Yeah. That's All really of our cool. Goodwills have a coffee bar. Mm hmm. All right, I think hey, it's official. Now work. Yvonne has basically told the internet we all need to move to Colorado to start sourcing good ones. <laughs> no, no, I'm pretty sure that's not what she said. <laughs> She's <laughs> like, no, don't come here. Nothing good here. Coffee sucks. It's terrible. Don't even. Exactly. Don't even so, hey, we almost got matching pink camouflage bras, just so you know. Just saying. The Nuba tags. Nuba tags. I mean, you know, I don't usually wear camo, but oh, you meant for you? Oh no, no, I didn't know but, what you're doing. But when there. you do, it's pink camo, right? <laughs> pink camo, because <laughs> you know oh, that could allow you to hide in a Victoria's Secret store. Like, what do you use that for? I don't even know. They just—they had a big rack full of swimming suits and bras, new with tags that were pink camo mm -hmm. from a company called Wild Wilderness. Yeah, yeah kind of yeah. like a what, what's that wild? Like Cabela's or the, yeah, that kind of yeah. Do your do your stores get a lot of new stuff out there, Yvonne? Like yeah. the Goodwills, do they get like pallet palletized stuff and shelf pulls and returns? Sometimes, especially a couple of them down in the springs, um, by my house because they're by a lot of other shopping and they get a lot of Target leftovers and whatever's left over from Nordstrom Rack, they'll mm -hmm. that'll some of that will show up too. Mm, okay. One of my goodwills down there. We're not telling you which one. No, not, nope. can't, can't do it. Sorry. You don't have to give away all the secrets here. Uh, the secret sauce here on the internet. It's, it's fine. Yeah. So, well, that's cool, guys. I'm glad you guys are uh, killing it out there. And um, I can't believe we kept the secret this long. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, can we go have fun now? We're oh, okay. Here. Well, all right. Fair <laughs> enough. I mean, I know this wasn't fun, but all right. No, you know I'm joking. I know. Um, you're but joking. we are. We're gonna head down the, the what they call the pass. We're gonna head down the pass, and we're gonna eat, and we're gonna have some more fun, and take more pictures, and all that other good stuff. All probably right. in about an hour after we eat. Well, I'll probably put us on Instagram story for anybody who wants to see Garden of the Gods. Yeah, so she's Yvonne's adding to her Insta story as we go, right? Yes. And, yeah, and what's so, your what's your Instagram, uh, Yvonne? I have it, but I can't think of the name. Is it? Yeah, you're on it. Um, we follow each other, um, but I'm the same everywhere. Yvonne flipping easy. Y i v o n, and then flipping or flipping. Flipping. I always write flipping because I like the way it sounds. But so Yvonne flipping easy, and we'll be on her Insta all day. Yeah, and we'll put links to that after we get off the uh, the show here. I'll put some links before I leave, and so you guys can connect to Yvonne if you haven't already. Cool. Hey, don't leave a mess on my desk. I'm not on your desk. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right, you. So glad. Thanks, everybody, for letting us come in and um, just kind of take over the show in the most bizarro way here. All right. You guys have fun. Bye. Bye. Bye See you soon. Bye. You're still alive. <laughs> uh, um, I'm going to see if I can. Uh, that's weird. All right. So um, there you guys have it. Uh, the sourcing in Colorado apparently is pretty good. The Goodwills give you free coffee. And I don't know. That's like free coffee. Like I can't even imagine a Goodwill doing that. But that's amazing. Um, no wonder she likes Colorado. But um, yeah, so some great stuff out there. I've, obviously, Karin and Vaughn are having an awesome time and um, be curious to see what uh, she comes back with. I'm going to I'm going to eject Karin from this because uh, it shows her still in the call. There we go. Uh, yeah, so second quarter, guys, is up on us. It is the beginning of April. It was actually yesterday. And so we got April, May, June. And Th those of you who are clothing sellers know that in the summer, sometimes sales can be a little slower just because school gets out, people go on vacations, all kinds of things like that happen. Um, but it's still a great opportunity to sell things. So I'm curious what you guys will, you know, what what's going to be your focus for these next three months, these 90 days? Like I love cutting the, the year up into like 30 and 90 day increments. Sometimes even just a week is great. Just think about like the next week, like what am I going to do? 
Um, and I was thinking about, I was listening to a podcast on the way here, and I don't know why it made me think of, because the podcast wasn't really about this particular topic, but just this idea that every day when you get up, there's going to be one thing that you do to impact your business to make it better. And what will that one thing be on any given day? Now, I'm not saying just, I'm not, I don't want to get so narrow with that. We say like, well, I'm just going to list this one item. That could be your one thing. Maybe it's maybe it needs to be a little bit broader and just say, well, I'm going to list items today. Maybe you don't even put a number on it. Maybe I'm going to source a different store today or a different area than I have before. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm going to start a YouTube channel or an Instagram about my exploits. Whatever it is, just coming up with one thing each day that you're going to do and that no matter what, you get that accomplished. Like that has to be done. That is what you've identified as, you know, the most and the most important thing for your business to do. And it'll give you a lot of great satisfaction if you can just kind of think about, all right, today I'm going to do this. And then at the end of the day, you, you, you know, you look at maybe some sort of, maybe you got some sort of journal or a list or whatever it is. And you say, I got that done. Like there's a lot of satisfaction in that. Even if you didn't get all these other things done, because I think, you know, having a short, narrow list, a short, narrow set of objectives that you can accomplish is much better than having this detailed, expansive list that's really overwhelming when you look at it. You know, we made this um, mind map for growth this year, and it it starts with just the word growth, like business growth, and it kind of goes out in all these different tendrils and all these different directions, and then those go even further out from each of those. So think if you had like one big core concept. And then maybe it splits into seven or eight concepts. And then each of those splits out into six or seven more. And all of a sudden it starts getting huge. And if you look at that, if you look at that in totality and think, well, I need, I'm going to do all this this year. It's overwhelming. Like there's just, there's no way to even put it together in your brain and think about how you would accomplish all those things. So instead I've tried to look at it as, all right, this day, or maybe even this chunk of this day, I'm going to focus on this part of this one. And maybe it's very tactical. Maybe it's just that I establish a route of stores to hit on the way to the warehouse. And then obviously I'm going to be sourcing when I go in there. I'm not going to say I'm going to source 10 items. I'm not going to source five items because I don't know. I might walk in those two or three stores on any given day and find nothing. That is not uncommon. And it's okay to walk into a store and walk out with nothing. You it's great if you can walk out with something that you can, you know, hit sort of your targets. But ultimately, if there's nothing that really makes sense, walk out. That's fine. You know, that's that's part of the game. But just having that narrow focus on, all right, this week I'm going to come up with, and I kind of did that. Like today, I said, all right, I can hit these stores as I'm heading into the warehouse. And maybe I'll hit them once a week. I'm not going to hit them every single day because it doesn't really make sense necessarily. But I have a lot of stores that are along the route, for instance, that are to this warehouse. So on one day, I could hit these two or three. And on a different day, I could hit these a cu these couple over here. And that way, I'm always sort of cycling through, you know, on a pretty regular basis. But just having a narrow focus like that and then able to accomplish it, I mean, I think it will pay such huge dividends for whatever this business is for you, whether it's your your part-time, your hobby, your full-time endeavor, you want to be full-time, whatever it is you're trying to do, you know, becoming narrowly focused on one or two things, I think is much better than trying to accomplish all the things because you won't. And I heard it. Oh, I remember what I heard on the podcast that struck a note with me. The, the woman who was talking said, at any one time, some of the balls that I'm trying to juggle are on the floor. <laughs> You know, no matter how much you think you're going to kill it, how much energy you have, how what a such a great plan you have. At some point, though, uh, at any point during the day, there's some things that you are not getting done that are not getting the attention that they eventually will need. And you have to give yourself grace over that. You have to tell yourself that's all right. That's going to happen. I can't kill it on every single thing every single day. Instead, let me just focus on one thing. And just really go after that and really try to nail that today. And then tomorrow's a new day and you do it. You start all over. Um, so let's see some of the comments here. Um, Resell Revivals had great success with Keen Shoes and Cool Jackets. Yep. Great. Two great brands. Shorts, Todd says, for summer. That's a great point. I mean, it is becoming shorts weather. I'm wearing shorts today. 
and people are going to start looking for them. Shorts are awesome to sell because they are usually, um, depending on how big they are, they might even go first class. So you can get by on a cheaper shipping option. So absolutely, shorts are amazing. Kristen is going to flat out grow her store and her average sale price. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's a great, I mean, I like that you just say you're going to grow it and you're going to grow your average sale price, but you're not going to get in, hopefully you're not going to get in this mindset of, well, I've got to have this average sale price of exactly this. Well, you might get to that and you might go way by it. It's like, why limit yourself with a specific number? I, you know, I talked about that at the beginning of this year. I, I was going to stay away from all these very specific numbers. I will reflect back and look at and say, well, I went from this number to this number, but I'm not going to say that this, you know, I'm here and, you know, if my average sale price is 24 bucks, I need to be at $37 by the end of the year. I'm not going to do that because there's way too many factors that can come into play there that don't really um, aren't totally in your control. And you, you really don't know. And, and besides, it's like, why would you limit yourself? You know, if you wanted to say have an average sale price of $40, but you kept running across all these items you could sell for 50 or 60 or 70, go after them. You know, if it makes sense, if it makes sense to get them and they'll sell through in the right amount of time and they don't cost too much to acquire, go after those. And, you know, maybe your average sale price will be 45 bucks at the end of the year. Who knows? But it's like, why limit yourself? Like, why not just go out and say, well, I'm going to source a new category of items and I know that that's going to push up my average sale price in general. Like, I'll give you a perfect example. New shoes are awesome, but I don't like sourcing boots <laughs> in particular. Like, and the only reason I don't is because they're hard sometimes to see the size. It's There's a lot of things that can go wrong with them. They're a pain in the butt to ship sometimes if they're really big and heavy. But if I was going to go for just an average sale price increase growth this year, and I was sourcing a lot of shoes, boots would be a terrific way to do it because boots typically sell for much more than shoes on average. Um, and you can still get them cheaply in a lot of cases if you're, if you're smart about it. So I have to kind of get over that and say, well, if sourcing shoes and selling shoes this year is a part of my strategy, and it's also part of my strategy to grow my average sale price, I need to consider boots, even though it annoys me to source boots and ship boots. So I'll go after some boots too. Um, so it's just one of those things where you have to be willing to do what it's going to take to hit your goals, whatever they may be. Uh, Julia had a 1K sales in her drop ship store last year. Um, 91 in sales and inventory store. Oh, all right. It's a start. That's good. It's positive. I like it. Longer list can overwhelm you. I love vision boards because you, your mind sees in pictures. Resale revival. Yeah, I will be sharing the mind map thing that we've been using, um, this concept. And um, I'm just... I wasn't ready to do it this week with Karn out of town. Just too many other things had to be done. I just couldn't get to figuring out a good show for it. So we'll we'll have it with her here and we'll do some screen shares of what it looks like. I, I really like mind maps and sort of seeing it visually instead of just a big list or I don't know. I just think it's easier to sort of comprehend. Uh, your extreme had three sales in the last seven minutes. Prof must be good luck. Yep, it's all me. 10% commission, sir. That's what I charge. Or ma'am. I'm not sure if you're male or female, but either way, whatever. I charge a commission. No, just kidding. That's awesome. Congrats. Uh, Kristen's working on spending, finding higher quality items. Less time listing, more time sourcing. There you go. Um, if it's a month since I got the inventory and I haven't photographed and listed it yet, is that a death pile? Fine line between collecting and hoarding, Julia asked. Okay. Julia, I, we covered this in a, in a video back several months ago, and here's our definition of a death pile, all right? No, to answer your question, no, that's not necessarily a death pile, but this was kind of the number we used. We wanted to put a number on. Let's say you have 100 items listed, okay, between all your platforms. If you have 20 items, 20%, and you can even argue 15%, but if you have 20 items that are not listed, if you have, if you're not listed as 20% of your listed or it's more than 20%, stop, stop buying, like deal with those items. That is a death pile at that point, And it's only going to get worse. Um, so just stop, stop buying at that point because 
you're not going to turn those fast enough to kind of get ahead of it if you keep buying at that rate and your, your death pile is likely to grow and grow and grow. And you're going to run out of capital um, if you're not careful. Because even though you're obviously buying it for less than you're selling it for, you're not listing it fast enough to sell it is the problem. Um, so 20% is the rule. I think it's a good rule. It's easy to know. You got 500 items listed, then you shouldn't have more than 100 sitting around. And I would be upset even if I had 100 sitting around at that point. But and if you want to set a different percentage, that's fine. But I think 20% is a decent rule to start with. So hopefully that helps. Uh, let's see. Uh, your extreme. Oh, $170 pair of churches. Nice. <laughs> and he's sending me an invoice. Great. <laughs> uh, I want to try selling hard goods. Rafiki Shop says, yeah, that's, you know, hard goods is... Um, a different animal, but I would I would recommend selling. Um, you could go two routes. You could go the new route and selling on Amazon, either FBA, FBA or fulfilled by merchant, and that sort of depends on what the item is because Amazon tends to move newer items quicker than eBay. But eBay has a tremendous amount of new items, um, so you could do eBay new as well. But you could also probably find some vintage type items, or not vintage, but just pre-owned that you know, were a little bit more um, expensive that people were looking for. But um, hard goods is great because it allows you to diversify. So you're not just doing clothing. Uh, let's see. Hiking boots and Chippewa Red Wings working boots sell for us in the summer. Mohammed, Mohammed says, yeah, um, I'm not as familiar with Chippewa, but I guess that's, is that, a, is that the brand or the style of the boots? Um, but Hiking boots are great. Uh, hiking boots are great along a lot of different brands. Um, I was looking at a cool pair of cowboy boots today, Coral, if you know that brand. They sell some very, um, some more expensive, um, newer ones, like $180, $250, $300 in some cases. So that's a great brand you can be on the lookout for. Some are better than others, just like anything else. Uh, I could list for a year. I could list for a solid year and never around my death pile. Well, then don't buy anything else, but Burleson, you've been told. <laughs> you can't say nobody told you to quit buying because I'm telling you now, if that's the case, quit buying, start listing, get those things sold. You know, you got money just sitting there that's tied up in sourcing and you're losing opportunity costs for the money that you could be making if you were selling it. So there you go. Um, only buy new stuff you list in 24 hours of purchase. Otherwise, leave it at the store. Yeah, that's a great... That's a great way to look at it. I don't, I don't know that everybody has that kind of discipline, but I love that rule. I mean, it's great. I don't always practice that rule for various reasons, but I think it's a great rule, actually. It gets you it gets you the mindset of like, buy, list, sell, buy, list, sell, and you just, you know, just rinse and repeat. Uh, let's see. Mohammed says Chippewa is a brand. Yep, I thought it was a brand, but I'm not. As, I've probably seen it before, but I couldn't remember for sure. Um, Chippewa, Denver, New Rocks, and Wesco boots listed. Oh, those are some great brands. There you go. I know a few of those. Um, <laughs> Seam store likes to keep a little death pile to get through the summer <laughs> when the thrifts don't have as much. That is true. So there's nothing wrong with having some inventory for listing to kind of keep your store refreshed and moving forward, you know, that that's fine. That's different, but you got to have discipline around it, guys. I've heard some horror stories where people would have like a hundred items listed and 200 unlisted. I'm like, that's crazy. Like that, not crazy. I don't mean it crazy that they're crazy. I just mean running your business that way. I mean, it doesn't make sense. That would be like a grocery store buying food to the point that they knew it was going to rot because they couldn't sell it fast enough. Like it's just wasteful. It doesn't make sense. So, don't do things like that. You'll, it'll make you feel bad about yourself. It'll make you feel overwhelmed. You won't be as profitable. Like there's nothing good that comes from just buying, 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 buying. Um, it's not a good habit to get into. This is a, I mean, treat it like a business. Like you want to buy and sell and then buy some more and sell. And then, you know, and you've got to do all the things between you got to do the listing and photos and um, packing and shipping and answering customer questions and so on. Um, so that's just part of it. But um, definitely keep an eye on those death piles, guys. And if you have one lift over here from quarter one, here's a great goal for quarter two. No more death pile. You got 90 days to knock it out. 
So if you've got 20% more items unlisted than you do listed, so if you got 500 items listed, you got 100 items unlisted or more, you got a death pile by our our own our made up definition. Commit to not having a death pile by the end of quarter two. That's a great goal. You got 90 days to do it. That's a lot of time, um, and it may require you to quit buying things in the meantime, and that's okay. So um, deal with it, and you'll be so much happier you did. It's overwhelming. You don't even know where to start when it's heaped up too big. One bite at a time, Patty. Just start with the first item you see. Honestly, that sometimes is the easiest way. Even if you don't want to do it, you think, eh, you know, or start with things you have quantity of. If you have quantity of something, do those because you can list those very quickly. Oh, I got three of these. I can make one listing and three things are now listed. Um, so that that's the easiest way is just to just start wherever you see the first thing. It, it really is no more complicated than that. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for hanging out today. I appreciate it. Thanks to my special guest, Yvonne and Karin, of course, from uh, sunny Colorado and Pikes Peak at land. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your Monday. Check out the description below. I will post some links to Yvonne's channel and so on, as well as um, in our show notes, we have all kinds of helpful links down there. You can subscribe to this channel and consider, you know, hitting that like button too, if you like this content before we go off the air here as well. But Hope you guys have a great start to your Q2 here in 2018. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer. them. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. And this is Prof Sales for Just Ask Karn saying good sales to you.